Hello my friends! Today I'm going to be sharing what is in my floral design toolkit. I think that all of these things are really essential in floral design and they just make your life so much easier. So I hope that you learned something. I hope that this makes your life a little bit easier. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and enjoy! First thing that I want to talk about are clippers. So I actually have a drawer full of clippers and that helps my team and I always have things on hand. So it's really important to keep these bad boys sharp. Um, these ones are a little bit more dainty and fine, so I like to use that for thinner stems. And then I have bigger ones, and then I even have more heavy duty ones than this. So it's important to keep these sharp. You don't really want to damage your stems. It makes water uptake more difficult for the flowers. So it's important to keep these sharp and clean. Some people like to sanitize them in between flowers. I kind of use that more for my house plants and things like that, but you can definitely do that. So invest in a good pair of clippers and make sure that it's ergonomic to your hand too. You're going to be making this motion hundreds of thousands of times for wedding, so just make sure that it's comfortable, it fits your hand, and the second thing that you can use is a florist knife and you kind of have to learn how to use these but it makes your life a lot quicker because you can just snip stems really really fast and you don't have to make that um, clipper motion. So if you want to invest in a florist knife, this is actually just a Swiss army knife. And I've had this one for years so they last forever. Uh, same thing with the clippers, just keep them sharp. Cutting things with dull tools is not fun. In addition to clippers and a floral knife or a florist knife, you can also invest in a pair of uh, wire cutters. And you probably have a pair of these in your garage somewhere, but I highly, highly, highly recommend that you have a pair of wire cutters on hand because back in the day, your girl would try to cut wire and chicken wire with my clippers and it just wears them out so quickly. It makes pretty easy job really difficult so make sure that you have a pair of wire cutters around um, and make sure that your entire team is using that so you don't want to be using these to cut wire like i said it's going to make your clippers really dull it's going to not make clean cuts and it's just you're gonna have a bad time i also like to keep a pair of ribbon cutting scissors and i only use these for cutting ribbon because I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where you're tying off a bridal bouquet and you've done the ribbon and you're one-handed and you're trying to cut the ribbon and it frays and it's so frustrating and oh, I feel for you um, but make sure that you have a super sharp pair of scissors that are only dedicated to cutting your ribbon. It's going to make your life a lot easier and you're going to save yourself some heartache. Let's talk about tape. So I have a couple different types of tape with me. This I call paper tape. <laughs> Obviously it's not made out of paper, but there's different colors that you can get. And I tend to like this brown one just because I feel like it's sometimes easier to hide for like floral crowns or something like that. But there's also green, there's a darker green, and this tape sticks to itself. It can be a little tricky to learn how to use in the beginning, but if you touch it, it's not sticky. The way that you use it is actually you pull it tight and then you twist it onto things. So once you pull it tight, you're kind of activating that adhesive and it's going to be able to stick onto itself, which is pretty neat. This stuff is not waterproof, so just make sure that you know that. You can't stick this like a vase or something and expect it to stick. If you did want waterproof tape, this is where it's at. As you can see, I've like used this to the very, very end. And then I like to have a clear as well, just to, if I'm putting it on like a vase as mechanics, I like to kind of mask that. I don't really like tape to be showing or any of my mechanics. So dark green and clear is what I have and they work really, really well. So. So get yourself some waterproof tape, it's a jam, and then make sure that you have this for boutonnieres and floral crowns, whatever you may need it for. Wire! This wire is so necessary. I have a lot of wire in different gauges, so that's like a different type of thickness. Some of it is thin, some of it's thick, and it kind of just depends on what you're trying to make, what gauge you want to use. So they sell it in paddles like this. I believe it's called a paddle. Yeah, they sell it in a paddle like this. They also sell it in packs so it's straight, which I kind of prefer because then you don't have to straighten it out. But this is much more convenient 
for traveling. It keeps it in one nice little spool. Get yourself some wire. I would recommend getting a couple different gauges just so you know what you're working with and what you're comfortable with. Some florists use just one gauge of wire for everything, but I think it's kind of important to have a few different ones to choose from for different projects. Let's talk about gloves. I have a couple different pair of gloves on hand. These ones I really like to use um, when I'm stripping roses. It's a leather palmed glove, so I'm not gonna get jabbed in the hand with some thorns. And they are just really long lasting and durable. I've had these for several years now and they haven't let me down. So invest in a pair of gloves. When I say invest, they're like $8. I think we actually got these at Costco a while back and it was like a three pack for under $15. So. Get yourself some leather gloves, they're gonna save your life and save your hands. In addition to those leather palm gloves, I also have these gloves, they're a little bit more soft. Um, if something, a thorn or something goes into your hand, it might protect you a little bit, but you could still get jabbed, so <laughs> these are filthy. I actually use some for gardening as well, so these are kind of like gardening gloves. Pretty sure I got these at Home Depot, but same thing, they last forever. Um, and just take care of your hands. It's really important to protect yourself. I also have nitrile gloves on hand. <laughs> on hand. Uh, these are really important for me because I don't wanna touch all those nasty pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides that are sprayed onto flowers. Unless your flowers are organically grown, you're gonna come in contact with all that stuff. So protect yourself, protect your health, put gloves on. It sometimes can be a little bit of a learning curve to design with gloves, but I found that the more that you do it, the easier it gets, as with most things. So put gloves on when you're working with flowers and make sure that you're washing your hands after you work with flowers because you wanna get all that nastiness off your hands. Zip ties. These babies are amazing. Um, you can use zip ties for anything. I use it to secure mechanics. I use it for arches and installations. There are actually reusable zip ties, which I'm gonna be looking into because as you know, I think it's important to reduce, reuse, recycle. So when I use these, it's kind of unfortunate because you do usually just have to cut them down and just toss them. Um, so if you can look into the reusable kind, I think that's really awesome. And I've never seen that before. I actually discovered that about like two weeks ago. So that's new to me as well. Um, but always have zip ties. I keep so many. I have like a little, show ya. My little satchel that I take to um, installations and on site. So easy. This is actually, it was a gift from my partner's mom for Christmas. So it's like a canvas little tote and These are floral pins. They're super important for boutonnieres and wrapping ribbon onto bouquets. You use them constantly and you can get them in lots of different colors. So these ones are just kind of like the standard white pearl tip, but you can get black and matte and metallics, whatever you want. But make sure that you get ones that I would say are around this size for boutonnieres is pretty appropriate. When you're using them, I can go into this in another video, but if you're using pins to secure like ribbon on a bouquet, push it up and in so the pins don't stick into somebody's finger because that would be very unfortunate. Let's talk about rose strippers. I use roses quite a bit in my designs and I actually did a little video that I didn't end up loving but I might refilm it again in the future and that was about trying out different kinds of rose strippers. So back in the day when I was working in the shop, I used to use these all the time and I find that they kind of damage the stems a little bit if you, cause it's really easy to kind of go too hard. It gives you just a little bit of space. So if you just do a little too hard, then you're gonna scrape the sides of your roses and that's gonna cause some problems. Um, so I invested in a few different kinds. This is supposed to save your hands. You basically wrap it around the stem and then pull down gently. Uh, same thing though, it's made out of metal and it can damage the stems is what I found. Maybe I'm just too strong for my own good, I don't know. But the one that I like the most is pretty surprising, and it's this guy. So this is also a rose stripper. And what you do is you kind of just bend it, and this is made out of some flexible plastic material. And you bend it, and you can wrap it around the stem, and then just pull all the way down. So this is a great alternative to these metal types I found. 
I think my brother just got home, so the dogs are going off right now. Just wait a little second. Maybe it's Amazon. I don't know. <laughs> we just ordered a humidifier on Amazon, and I'm really excited about it. I feel like my plants and I need it. So this is a little corsage cup. I think that they are so beautiful. This one's a little bit um, wider than I normally go for, but it's what I have on hand today, so I just wanted to show you. It's really easy to use. I can show you in a future video how I use these corsage cuffs, but this is something that I like to have. I also keep these on hand, and these are little bezel cups. So I'll pull one out for you to see. But it's like a little, a little cup and you can make a floral ring with it. So, it's really cool. I'll, I'll definitely make a video with these because I just think they're so cool. And, and I love floral jewelry, so really neat. Something else that I love to keep in my toolkit, and these ones are not even open, but command hooks. If you're at a venue setting up and they don't allow you to put nails or secure things to the wall or whatever the case may be, these are clutch. They don't leave crap on the walls and it's really easy to get away with awesome installations and things that you would never be able to do if you didn't have these. So keep these on hand and there's different kinds obviously. This one only holds up to two pounds. I have a couple different sizes and different shapes and things like that that I like to use. I talked about this in my last video about why I don't use floral foam, but this is an eco wrap. So <laughs> I think I described it as a compostable paper towel diaper, something ridiculous like that. But basically what you do is soak these and then you can wrap your um, small bouquet up in it and then you can use a little outer layer to secure this so that you're not leaking out water everywhere. These are awesome, great tool to have and they also have different sizes too that you can use. I like to use a couple different types of glue. Um, this is my Oasis Floral Adhesive, so this is really, really awesome for making corsages and just whatever you need. Um, I definitely would recommend having floral glue. And then I have some E6000, so that's just for more heavy-duty projects. And I like to keep it in this cute little container because you always want to keep your glue standing up. I've made the mistake several times where I don't keep my glue standing up and then it gets in the cap and it's just... Mess. and you don't want that in your life we want organized and clean and we want to be able to use this again because throwing out tubes of glue that are full just because the cap is all messed up or whatever the case may be is not cool I definitely recommend you getting a pair of loppers if you don't have one um, we actually bought this for our backyard and then I realized wait a second this is the greatest because I can cut big thick stems and branches without kind of destroying my hands trying to cut branches and things that are hard with just clippers alone. So if you can, invest in a pair of loppers. I think this was like $15 or something from Home Depot and it really makes your life a lot easier. This is an optional one. It's a glass designing head. You could use it for lots of different things. Just reminds me of that episode of The Office where Michael has a paper mache head. <laughs> uh, I'm a weirdo. And I watch The Office constantly and if you don't know, they're taking it off Netflix and I don't know what I'm going to do. I used to watch The Office on DVD all the time so maybe I'll just bring that back. <laughs> but I use this little guy for designing flower crowns and doing kind of any piece that needs to sit on the head. I used to design like on my head and that just makes it so much harder. So I've talked about chicken wire in a previous video that I was doing about why I don't use floral foam in my designs. And that's why you don't see floral foam in my toolkit. But this is plasticized chicken wire and it comes in a roll and it's pretty inexpensive and affordable. I talked about why I get plasticized and I'll go over that again. But basically I use plasticized chicken wire because it can be reused. So if you're using just regular chicken wire, it can get rusty and that's what kind of poisons your water. So you don't want to use that because you can't really reuse it over and over again. So plasticized chicken wire is the way to go. And I always keep this on hand because I use this for house plants, installations, like bouquets, centerpieces, you name it, chicken wire is the jam. Another thing that I talked about in a previous video was floral frogs. 
And I like to collect these and you can actually get at thrift stores and things like that. They have um, antique floral frogs because this is what used to be used widely before floral foam came on the market. So if you can, always look for floral frogs. They're just so neat and really, really nifty in your designs. This is another type of wire that I really enjoy using. I like to use this in um, floral crowns or any kind of like installation on your head. It's really, really, really easy to manipulate and it kind of matches your hair a little bit more. So this is great to use and it holds its shape. So I prefer using this over something like this in a floral crown and that's why I keep it around. All right. So that's what's in my floral design toolkit. Obviously that's a very quick overview. If you want more information about what I use and why I use it, please drop a comment down below and let me know what you need to know. I'm totally here and I'm an open book so if you have questions please let me know and leave a comment down below. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it give it a thumbs down. That's all right too. But if you do like what I'm producing I will be making new videos every single week so be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell if you want a notification when I post a new video. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that it was helpful to you. It makes your life a little bit easier and I will see you next week.